Yo, my peoples, what's up? My name is Jason, and I'm from the Shelf Stories YouTube channel, and I'm here to review an expansion for one of my favorite games that have come out over the last five or six years, the Pursuit of Happiness Experiences expansion. So, um... Tom Vassal reviewed the base game and the community expansion on the Dice Tower, and I'd like to pick up that baton and review the second expansion, which adds new thematic content, which adds experiences, which adds trips, um, you know, gives a little bit more specificity to going on a vacation to exotic locales, and it also adds children. So it really does a lot to fill out your life. Let's go see how they integrated all this thematic content at the table. So let's go to the videotape. So these are the basic components you're going to be getting with the, the Pursuit of Happiness Experiences expansion. Now you're going to get more cards for your project deck and your item deck, but they, as you can see, they kind of disappear. And they make the decks uh, more and more fat with potential variation to your game. Uh, but there are three unique elements that you're getting. First of all, you're getting the experience deck uh, and the board over here. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using your new Cloud Meeple. Yeah! going to the plan experience space, and then you get an experience. So um, I think these cards are a little bit more flavorful than um, the basic cards, uh, a little bit more exotic trips and that kind of thing, but they work the same way. Uh, you, you know, have resource, you claim it, and then you get stuff. So like, you know, the usual pursuit of happiness, uh, get stuff, spend stuff, to get stuff, spend stuff, points, there you go. Uh, so that is the number one aspect. Uh, number two is this new action called the dream action. So the dream action is actually a card reserve. And you can reserve any card that you want that's eligible. So if I wanted to reserve this experience, say I wanted to go to Bali, but I can't afford it right now, uh, I can put that over here and I would get an actual resource uh, for reserving it. This doesn't count as being in my tableau or, or score points for me until I use another action in a future turn to plan experience and actually claim the card. So it's a good way to you know to catch a card that you really think is good. And like I said, you can reserve any card with it. Let's say I think Kaylin is especially fetching. I fell in love with her. She, <laughs> it was love at first sight, but she wasn't interested in me. So I'm just gonna sit here and <laughs> claim her uh, in my thoughts, so to speak, until I'm ready to make a move. The longer they sit on this board, the longer they will accrue these desire tokens. There you go, I am pining and I am pining and I am waiting for the right time to make my move and actually implement some of these things. The turn that you actually do, these accrue round by round, uh, the turn that you actually do accrue them, you actually claim the desired tokens and they become victory points. So it's like delayed gratification, you know, uh, um, the best things in life are worth waiting for. So uh, that is the dream action. It is a new card reserve. So now, the last thing, let's just uh, take, say, I, I have um, initiated my relationship with Kaylin. Uh, I've gotten past my jitters. I am progressing their relationship. And now I am ready to raise a family with her. So the raise family uh, status would normally generate points every round in the base game. Now I can have children. So whenever I activate this bottom space, I would uh, get a child card. And here's Javier. So I think the philosophy of the game is that um, these children, they don't give you much <laughs> in terms of stuff. It's mostly a uh, long-term happiness and they cost you stuff. So the longer I have Javier here and if I can meet the prerequisite and I'm willing to spend the stress and the money, um, I would progress um, Javier uh, from a teenager to a grown-up. And there's also, no, there's also more kids. So you have Kai over here. Uh, Telemachus, so you could see a little bit of an international flavor to some of these cards. I got Maya, I got Molly. Oh, surprise, twins, <laughs> discard and, and draw two kids. Um, very, very cute addition. So, you know, just to kind of flavor up the Kalen or uh, flavor up that part of the game, uh, which was a little bit static in the base game. Here, you get to have kids and, and have more um, imaginings for your family. So that was the Pursuit of Happiness Experiences expansion. So Tom's original conclusion about the community expansion was that it was really nice. There was some good thematic material in there to expand the story, but not really necessary in terms of um, something that you must have uh, to complete your Pursuit of Happiness experience. Let's go see uh, how this particular expansion experiences uh, compares with that particular judgment. 
So the first uh, item is the experiences cards, that deck and that uh, row of cards. Uh, as you can see, it does the same things. You know, obviously, you know, it's great to imagine you're going to Bora Bora and doing these uh, exciting things. So from a thematic perspective, and I'm a thematic gamer, I love it. <laughs> the more the merrier. Uh, but, you know, at about 35 bucks, this is a pretty hefty price tag, and I think a lot of gamers are going to want new mechanism content. And in terms of that experience deck, nah. Uh, that it's basically more of the same. And as a matter of fact, it makes the game a little bit longer because you get an extra meeple uh, to place and get stuff. And it's like, okay, making the game longer for the same card. So I <laughs> don't know if that's very exciting. What is exciting is that second thing that I pointed out, which is the card reserve, the dream deck. I really like it. And I think that Pursuit of Happiness needed something like that. Um, the way the base game works, uh, the cards come out in a river. So you get a, you lay out a tableau of cards, and then every round it would refresh. So there were very often times where the perfect card would come out, but you're not ready for it. Uh, let's say, especially in the job market. So like you've got a level one job, you have an arch job, and you know you want to like you know emphasize money because you have you're going for some goal where you're gonna you know get a lot of money. And the level three job, <laughs> the thing you're gonna promote to, just floated by earlier, and there was nothing you could do about it. Now you can. Now you can just snap that card up, let the victory points build up on it to the maximum of three, and then when you're ready, uh, you know, just take it and uh, you know not feel like you lost out. So that's a new mechanism in the game, that card reserve, and it's uh, well thematically integrated too, which I think is the brilliance of this game. Like there's so much cool thematic integration. It's not immersive. It's not like a you know you can totally like uh, you know get swept up in the second life ideal. However, you know, there's a lot to work with and it makes sense. It makes sense that, you know, I've um, imagined my uh, future wife or husband or something like that. And I, it's a D in my head, but then I'm not ready for it. And then when I'm ready, you know, I'm able to kind of progress that. Wonderful. Uh, I think that individual piece is better than what's available elsewise in either expansion. And then there's the kids. Um, the kids... I'm glad they took a shot at it because it was definitely a missing piece, you know, like, you know, you look at the game of life. I think the thing that stood out about that, you know, the old game of life was like having the little pegs, you know, blue peg, pink peg and all that. Um, you know, those kids were like a huge part of that game and kids are a huge part of family and life and everything. Finally, glad they took a stab at it. It's a little bit like an appendage to the game. And also just the idea that like, you know, it gives you happiness, but it doesn't really give you much else. There is a philosophy going around that, you know, kids are basically like short term pain for long term gain and happiness and all that. I, I can buy that. And I think that some people are going to resonate with it. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I, I OK, I'm, I'm glad that they are glad that they took a shot at it. And it does kind of fill out the story, but I definitely felt like it was, you know, vestigial to the experience. Like an appendage, it didn't really like integrate that as well as I would wanted it to. And I'm also um, glad that they tried to do a little bit of international representation. You saw the different faces, you saw the different, uh, you know, you had uh, different genders, you had different nationalities, different names. Uh, they did uh, definitely uh, go an extra mile there, which was appreciated. One thing I did want to mention just in terms of the whole motif, I think there was a good opportunity uh, all over the place to introduce different art. The art's all the same style. And if you're going to do, if you're going to go cross-cultural, if you're going to go, you know, kind of sweep across the world, then maybe we can introduce some more art styles. Maybe we can introduce uh, a little bit more diversity there. Um, minor complaint, but I did want to put that out there. All right. Final judgment time. Uh, definitely a strong pass. Seven out of ten. Uh, I would actually get this expansion ahead of the community expansion if you're just picking up uh, the game for the first time. Uh, because of that extra mechanical piece of the card reserve, thematically well integrated, and also buttresses what could have been a frustrating experience with the, with the base game, which is seeing cards disappear and not being able to do much about it. Um, so that's uh, very, very cool. Um, and also the de decision space of like when to take it and, you know... <laughs> Um, so really, really good stuff there. Uh, the rest of it, you're looking at uh, thematic integration, and that might be great uh, for your uh, particular game group. If you're playing this game and you're telling stories about it afterwards, uh, you could add in, you know, Bora Bora and you know, uh, marathon running. You can add in, you know, uh, kids and all that kind of thing. So um, very, very strong uh, recommendation for Pursuit of Happiness with the Experiences expansion. Uh, and uh, that's all I got for you today. Uh, nice and short. Uh, so this is Jason reminding you that if you can change your mind, you can change the world. So until next time, later, everybody.